Let's talk about the... Let's move on from Bethesda and Xbox to Caboose is rubbing his hands. Um, I feel like maybe his background has something to do with it. Square Enix presents. Um, they announced a few things in this presentation. The one big one, which is the Guardians of the Galaxy game, which we'll get into in just a bit. But they also announced the Marvel's Avengers. We're getting that War for Wakanda. Um, they gave us you know, some gameplay from that. It's coming this August, which is great. We saw Babylon yeah. Falls or Falls, Babylon's Fall, which interests yeah. me, but I, I feel <laughs> like I need to see more um, from that as well. What was really cool, though, is they're diving deeper into the Final Fantasy franchise um, with this whole origin series of Final Fantasy that seems very action heavy. Um, so any fans out there that was looking to get a remake part two trailer for final fantasy seven you kind of had this to fill that void it doesn't make up for it but that's what we're gonna get and uh of course guardians of the galaxy which is really what yes. we wanted to break down talk about uh we don't have too much time so caboose you start off yeah no i mean this was something that a lot of people were speculating about was possibly going to happen i know i talked about this last week and it looks like the rumors were true i just montreal is working on a guardians of the galaxy game and it's almost it's the most I don't know how to explain it. It's it's a single player action adventure game that's not going to have a single microtransaction nor a single piece of DLC. I spoke to the developers and they confirmed to me that nothing post launch will be added to Guardians of the Galaxy. This game when, when come launch, Steve, your cat is adorable. Uh, <laughs> come launch, come launch that it, it'll be a complete package and that's it like you will get all the content you'd come to expect or want to try out out of guardians of the galaxy day one and that is unlike anything i've ever seen in a long time yeah yeah but it feels it feels very on brand with marvel shows right now because even though they are released weekly you're not expecting months of of one show they're like hey we only got this many episodes for this shows so you're getting a bite-sized story of something mm. and, and i like that too because it gives me faith that they are going to give me a complete story from beginning to end it's going to be a whole experience that's going to conclude and you don't have to worry about microtransactions or cliffhangers or a possible dlc to get that whole experience and also right. you don't have to worry about purchasing other like characters like that that's the biggest thing you get the whole crew off the bat yeah I mean, speaking of that, though, I think my biggest disappointment with the Guardians of the Galaxy game is you only get to play as Star-Lord. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get the opportunity to play yeah. as the other Guardians, um, which I do think is a massive missed opportunity. A lot of the conversations surrounding this is that it's it's got these like immersive sim elements to it, right? It, there are choices to be made, and when you make those choices, you're playing as Star-Lord. Star-Lord is the one who makes the decisions as the team leader. But yeah. I think we could have had the best of both worlds. Coming, come, You go into combat and you get to switch between the Guardians play as them. When it's time to make a choice, you go and, and switch over to Star Wars. No, I, I actually, like I'm, I'm more confident in this decision. I think the fact that it looks completely different than Marvel's Avengers also piques my confidence in I mean, yeah. their ability, you know, uh, to actually do a really good game. I'm like, I mean, mm. this just reminds me of Deus Ex, right? Like you're playing as Star Lord, you're going through um, these different decisions that you have to make. Like the one uh, that I found really funny was when they're deciding to Warm throw Rocket. rocket. Yeah. over to yeah. get the bridge down and it it showed up rockets very angry so there's some aspect i believe where they're going to remember every character is kind of going to remember what you did and may change their responses mm -hmm. uh throughout the game so i'm excited about that portion and just the humor like they really nailed the humor of guardians of of the guardians movies and what we know you know obviously we don't have the same character designs which i think is a great choice referring to comic mm -hmm. books trying to make yeah. your own designs although peter quill mm -hmm. more looks like a a, a ja than like anything else um <laughs> it makes me like kind of hate him more but then also like him uh because of his humor um so mm -hmm. I, I like that they kind of played into what makes that franchise so special and the group of characters so special like they don't like each other um and you get that mm -hmm. throughout every interaction that we saw in those trailers and i also it seemed like with, with the music choice kind of influencing the style they went for more of like this heavy metal rather like more metal rock and roll than kind of like the the pop culture like 
pop funk uh, that we saw in some of the other like movies. And I kind of like that because it, it fits his aesthetic. And when they showed some of the older Guardians of the Galaxy like comic book covers, it definitely had kind of like that heavy metal magazine feel. Sure. Uh, and I'm interested to see how like that choice and the music affects the overall gameplay because Part of the charm of Guardians of the Galaxy 1 and 2 was the music yeah. and like, yeah. how it fit into the story. Mm -hmm. I feel yeah. bad for all the content creators wanting to stream this. I, I'm just going to have to experience all the cool music and all that stuff on my second playthrough. But yeah. uh, it is what it is. What can you do? I'm glad that they're including a feature for content creators. so that Which they is awesome. Worry about it. Yeah, it's, um, that's yeah. nice. But yeah, yeah, I'm interested to see what the like the full breadth of like music will be in this game because yeah, it, music plays such an important role as you saw like in the trailer. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm really dig uh, gonna dig into uh, how much music is in here. But yeah, I, I really like the the visuals of this game of the yeah. characters. Mm -hmm. I was gonna say like it's a smart choice. Some people consider it a safe choice, but I think it's a smart choice that they decided to to make this in terms of character design and presentation leaning more towards the MCU interpretation of the Guardians because yeah. mm -hmm. when it comes to characters like Spider-Man or Batman or Superman, there are characters that are so iconic that you can do different things and you can play around and have fun with those characters. But yeah. Guardians is so new and what put Guardians as a franchise on the map was the films and what people yes, most right. recognize when they think of the Guardians is the films. So yeah. if you're going to create a game surrounding them, you want to go with the the design from the MCU, which I thought was a smart idea. But I think the, the yeah. really s smart idea was just having them different enough yes. to differentiate yes. the two, which is something that Marvel's Avengers failed to do with. Yeah. Like the first look at the Avengers cast you saw, you're like, is this supposed to be the MCU? Yes, I don't really you're know. Not like too it's too sure. similar. Uh, yeah. The, yeah. The personalities of each character were too similar too. Like here, I think that mm -hmm. they struck like the perfect balance to, to mm -hmm. what Caboose is saying, where you, you have those touchstones, but at the same time, like look at Gamora and look at Drax, for instance. The, yes. Those lean way heavier towards the comics yeah. than they do the MCU. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Rocket's little beard with the, yeah, yeah, with his little <laughs> old man Rocket. Yeah, <laughs> his little Viking beard. Um, one thing that mm -hmm. does concern me with the game, and I think like maybe i need to see more gameplay the combat i don't know what it is it just seems yeah. like it's not dynamic enough um it seems mm -hmm. like it may get stale um of course we didn't see that many fights or different enemy types but that's my concern um i don't know if yeah. i necessarily like the assigning like you you're not because you're not playing as any other characters yeah. you're assigning Sis the assist yeah. to other characters whereas i just think they should have just scrapped that and have you Damn. play just solely as peter quill you can't control any yeah. of the other characters because then you have that control in combat but then i feel like there's a disconnect when you don't have that control in cutscenes, especially when you're making decisions and yeah, the characters are knowing to... like going off your decisions based on how they respond or what they do later on in the story yeah, and I think they're trying to incorporate the gameplay to really lean into this idea that, like, Peter Quill is the leader of this group. And it did kind of feel like a top-down RTS at times when he's just floating around, like, peppering these little shots but pressing all these button combos to get his teammates mm. to do stuff. I'm worried that it is going to feel clunky, and if I'm going to kind of just focus on a couple different combos and then just, like, the gameplay is going to get old and then are you really going to want to like try and learn all these different things with the different guardians mm -hmm. right well, which i think is kind of a shame because the gameplay itself of peter looks so good the movements that he does like it, it, during combat looks like it was ripped straight from the big screen i i think mm -hmm. they nailed that aspect but mm -hmm. then it's like immediately having this fluid combat slow down and grinding to a halt when you're going through menus yes. and be like okay now Groot's gonna do this oh that's on a cooldown I guess we're gonna do this attack now yeah. and it's like I don't know if they've talked about it because uh Caboose, you, you uh, had a bit more time uh looking at mm. the game with the devs but like I wonder if there's gonna be a way to just play as Quill like mm -hmm. don't even have to worry about those extra like just uh, to auto menus like it's, and just, yeah exactly if they just yeah, do their that's own a thing good question. Mm -hmm. yeah i would i would I also, love that so the devs explained to me that like the ai the guardians your team they're not useless like they still they'll do their own thing right it's just when you when it's time when you want to call an assist that's specifically when they will like i see do mm -hmm. something that helps you in the combat which yeah. I, i'm assuming you might need but we'll for see, certain right? 
boss fights or whatever. But my yeah. thing is too, like, I don't know what it is. Like, so if it's taking this approach, you're playing as Peter Quill. I don't want to see health bars for my enemies. Like, I, I just don't. Mm-hmm. I think they get in the way. Mm-hmm. So, like, I had a little bit of issues with that, you know, this auto assigning of, um, you know, abilities to my other crew, especially because if they don't, like Malik said it, you know, they're trying to position Peter Quill as the leader. But when I watched the first Guardians movie, I never got that thought that he is the leader. And I feel mm-hmm. by assigning, you know, him assigning or you as the p- playing as Peter Quill assigning a task to your teammate, it then it just it's just weird. It doesn't smooth. It's not a, like a smooth flow into the narrative of like where they are. are. They hating each other. They're arguing all the time for every decision. So it'll be interesting how sure. that really plays out. Pre- like when we see more of the game and especially mm-hmm. the campaign. Yeah. 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 I agree. I'm looking forward to it. I'm glad it's coming out this year. Uh, I'm excited for it. Hopefully it doesn't get delayed. Hopefully when it comes out, it's a polished, finished product. Mm -hmm. I will say that I agree, Camille, that the the gameplay does look a little wonky, but um, I'm going to reserve my full judgment until we see a lot more and as well until, of course, I get my hands on it. Yeah. I was just going to say, I think that they should copy more of the style from Jedi Fallen Order. I like that mm. minimalist movie. Yeah. Yes. Look, I feel like that would fit a little bit better. Sure, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I agree. There's also like I think there's a way for them to bring inspiration from the comic books as well, like if they want like you see that in the health bars like how they look they're bolded. Um and it kind of looks like it's ripped off the comic. There's ways to do that kind of yeah. similar to the Deadpool game. Um but yeah, mm-hmm. I guess just how they're positioning I I want to see more of what this story where the guardians are like where we are in the campaign i think will really Mm -hmm. um lay out how the gameplay should look to fans uh but yeah we had so much to talk about this time around um and i'm looking forward to the guardians and all these other games that are coming out and e3 is still not done we still have the nintendo direct which we're gonna go over next week and everything else that we might have missed so stay tuned for that um as well as articles coming to squadstate.com let us know your thoughts on twitter at squad state and we'll see you guys next week i'm super excited guys uh so i guess i'll see you next week I see you next week. (laughs) Looking forward to it.